this episode we're going to try and get this gas gauge to work. On this particular car the fuel gauge has 12 volt coming from the on position and then 12 volt coming out. If you test with the key on and put a volt tester to the driver's side and you should see 12 volts. If you don't then the problem is right here. Put a tester to the passenger side wire of the fuel gauge, you should also see 12 volt. If you don't see 12 volt there, the problem is the gauge itself. You then do an ohm test on this side as well to see if you have a ground condition on that wire. You should not have a ground condition unless the tank is actually empty. If it's closer to full, the ohms should show that there is no ground. The fuel gauge in the rear in the tank is literally just a resistance meter. So as this 12 volt goes up to here and through here and then down to the tank the meter inside the tank floats up and down and has a wire on it that touches a resistance meter if the tank is low it creates a full ground on the wire connected to this gauge and then if it's full it shows a completely open wire not grounded at all that will show on this gauge so the gauge will show if it the wire is grounded completely it goes over here and then as the resistance goes up blocking out to no ground then it shows full. So the next test after an ohm test showing that your wire is not grounding out somewhere on the way to the back of the tank would be to test to make sure you have 12 volts on the end of the wire at the tank itself. If the tank itself doesn't have 12 volts then you know the wire is grounding out somewhere and then you can replace the wire or fix it. You take the wire off of the back at the tank and therefore it should be an open wire. There's no ground. So no matter what the fuel float in the tank will say, because there's no ground, this gauge will show full. And then when you touch it to a bare spot on the frame, creating a full ground, this gauge should go completely to empty instantly when you touch ground, showing that the resistance on the wire in the gauge is working. Then reconnect the wire to the fuel gauge and the tank in the back. Attach a wire to one of the nuts or bolts holding the fuel sending unit to the tank and run that wire from that bolt or nut up to the bare spot on the frame. This will create a perfect ground for the fuel gauge to use, therefore the gauge should be more accurate. So we have our voltmeter set up so we can read it. I'm going to find a good ground, uh, turn the key to on. Something else I just read online was saying that you pull the brown wire on a 55-56 tan wire on a 57 off and it should simulate open ground so we don't even have to go back to the tank. I'm going to try it now and there we go. We have completely full condition with no ground connected so clearly the gauge works. So what we're going to do now is reconnect the brown wire to the outside post on the passenger side and then we're going to inspect at the tank. So here we are back at the tank, just over the rear differential, you can see the tank behind the exhaust here. We have the fuel line going up and out to the carburetor, and we have the brown wire coming from the fuel gauge. Looks like popping through the floor in the trunk maybe, or the rear seat. And there is a little nut holding this on so we're going to take this off and ground it to a solid ground and see what happens in the cab. Now with the wire completely off of the tank we're replicating the same thing we did up here by pulling the wire off so we should see a full condition. And there we go. So now we know that the ground at the tank is either bad in the fuel gauge sender itself or we're not getting a proper ground through that wire into the body itself. So we're going to test that now. So now I'm just going to tape the ground wire to the exhaust pipe. That should be a good ground being as that it's connected to the motor. Now with our wire connected to the exhaust we're showing a fuel reading. So the wire is clearly fine. So now our option would be to run a wire off of one of these screws over to the frame and hope that that cures the no ground issue here or improper ground I should say it is kind of wiggly but if we run the ground from there to there and we don't show a proper fuel level because the tank is almost full then we know that there's something wrong with the actual fuel sending unit itself this way you can actually deal with it at the perfect time by ordering a new sending unit and having it ready before you ever pull this out that way your car is never down Someone used the drill and didn't plug it back in, so I'm gonna try and put the sheet metal screw in 
with this ratchet. I'm not too hopeful. Time for a punch. Just to attest how tough this metal is from the 50s. This is just the bottom skin of the trunk itself where you would throw tools or whatever. And it's not even on the flat part, it's on the angled part behind the shocks. And it took a good six or seven hits with a hammer just to make a dent in this thing to then put this self-tapping screw through it. This is some of the toughest metal I've ever had to punch through. That's a good idea once you set your ground up that you paint over it because this is going to get a lot of spray from the wheels and it will rust quickly and ruin all of your hard work. So we're going to hit it with a little splash of paint to seal the bare metal in before we come out of here. Now with our wires all connected, nice ground, we should get a more proper reading on the fuel gauge. All right, we did it. So the float actually works, the fuel sender works, the fuel gauge works, and the wire between the two is not grounding out to anything. It's just the tank wasn't grounding itself to the body as well as we needed. Now that that works, I can move on to the hot and cold temp sensor and see what that is. Hopefully the same thing, this still works. These things don't tend to break. I inspected it, it looked just as new and clean as this one. So my guess is either the wiring's wrong or the fuel temperature sensor is bad. If you like the video, smash that fucking like button. If you want to subscribe so you see my videos as soon as they're uploaded, hit the subscribe button. And as always guys, keep on modding.